two, three games a day. So when you have this kind of format, it does make things a little easier. Defensively, Denmark's D has been pretty solid of late. But again, when you talk about it, different test when you talk about a team like Botswana and then a team like Venezuela. Again, if Venezuela have some big swingers here. They swing from the hips, from the shoulders. Big, strong boys there. A lot of strength in those upper bodies. So this will be a big test for Denmark. So we will set the stage another full slate of games here today at the Pepsi Softball Center. It'll be India against United States. That's at 11.30. Turkey and Botswana go at 12.30. South Africa against Argentina. Czech Republic against Great Britain. Canada will get Hong Kong. New Zealand and Japan, which is touted as the game of the day, and Dominican Republic against Australia, which shouldn't be too bad either. So Hansen will get set now to face the leadoff man, Herwins Corrales. Sorry, Corrales, as we are set to get underway here. Overcast skies in Whitehorse. They're calling for some rain this afternoon, about an 80% chance. So it's a possibility that... It'll be very similar to the way things went yesterday, Joe. Just a few degrees cooler, that's all. And underway, first pitch from Hansen is on the outside corner for a called strike. Thanks for joining us. I know across the country it's not necessarily 10 a.m. It's just a little bit later, so hope you're enjoying your Monday. Big swing and a miss from Corrales. And Hansen's up in the count, 0-2. And that one is popped up and drifting out of play. So both these two teams come in with two and one records. It would have been very interesting to see that early matchup Venezuela and Japan game. But of course that didn't happen. And a swing and a miss. So Hansen on point records his first strikeout in the first batter. And that will bring up Iran Paez, the third baseman. Great rise ball there by Hansen. So Hansen's got a good command of all his pitches, got a good rise ball, works the corners well, has a drop, doesn't have a back-breaking Devin McCullough change, but he does change speeds. That ball laced right off the leg of Hansen, and good composure to collect himself, grab it, flip it over to first to record the second out of the inning. Well, there's a, something to wake you up in the morning. He's Line shot right back at you. <laughs> He's certainly wake now. Yeah. That'll bring up Yetter Chirinos. And, of course, Chirinos, no shortage of international and club experience. Good hitter. Chirinos. And equally good out in the field. Sorry, Chir Chirinos is four for eight, three hits and eight RBI so far. Sorry, three home runs. So remember they had that big blowout game against Turkey, 35-0, where they ran up the score, and Chirinos had three home runs in that game alone. And I think he was going for four and five. <laughs> the time inning limit. And that ball, slow roll to third, fielded off the wrong foot over in time to record the out. So solid defense there from Anders Savin and the rest of the Denmark D. One, two, three. Down go Venezuela. It will be Denmark to bat when we come back after this.
Welcome back here for the bottom of the first inning. Set the batting order for Denmark. Martin Simonson will lead things off, followed by Anton Brown. Valdemar Turgelson bats in the third spot. Daniel Julinon, the designated player, is the cleanup hitter. Anders Jorgensen bats fifth. Mikael Anderson, sixth. Mark Nehoy in the seventh spot. Anders Svein is in the eight hole. And Dennis Nielsen will round out the nine for Denmark. Defensively, and it's a good one for Venezuela. Carlos Carreño is out in left field. Herman Corrales in center and Edwin Linares in right. Iran Paez at the hot corner, Yetter Chirinos and at short, Jorge Lima at second, so a strong infield up the middle. John Zambrano is at first base, and Rafael Flores, the veteran behind the plate, power hitter, will be catching for Carlos Uchero. Uchero's pitched 2.1, two and a third innings so far, four Ks and three hits against his pitching record so far in this tournament. So a bit of an easy schedule for Venezuela in the early going, and I say that because they did forfeit that game against Japan. Haven't really been challenged up to this point. Like I told you, 35 nothing against Turkey. Then they came back and won 12-5 over the Czech Republic. So yep. They've only had eight innings of play so far. So that one goes off the backstop to run the count now to two balls and no strikes. Underway in the bottom of the first inning here. The first ball game on day four of competition. Lance went alongside Joe Todd. And a big swing and a miss from Simonson. Nice inside pitch there trying to tie up Simonson on his hands. And that's usually what you try to do with the big guys. Keep it out of the wheelhouse. And he tries to bunt it and it will go up and over the press box here. So the count even now at two balls and two strikes. Lucky yesterday, Joe, a lot of the rain held off. Not so sure that we're going to be dodging that bullet today. But again, I guess you never know. You just never if know. If it's going to roll down the mountain or not. <laughs> we hope it stays in the mountain. It could stay in the mountain. I'm okay with that. So the 2-2. Two -two. And Ochero is up and out. So... Sorry, the count was apparently full, and a leadoff walk to Simonson. And leadoff man's aboard for Denmark and Anton Brown. Brown being the top hitter for Denmark, four for eight with one double. So Brown was instrumental and brought in the first and only run in that one nothing win over Botswana yesterday. With no rain last night, the infield's in great shape, as is the outfield. So a bit of a mix-up there. Flores giving instructions and Uchero ready to, <laughs> ready to throw. Very important they're on the same page here early in the morning. And in the afternoon and at night. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what the home plate umpire says too. That's right. <laughs> so the old one square in a bunt, slaps at it, and it goes foul. Probably not gonna get too many bunts down working that kind of tactic, but I, I and this is what I'm gonna assume that um, Brown was thinking as he saw the two corners come charging in, maybe get a little extra on it, pop it just over their heads or by them. And instead of a sack, now you've got a base hit. Unfortunately, now he's in the hole 0-2. And looking for that corner was Uchero. Didn't get the call. And the count now 1-2. and two. Sam Brano, first baseman for the Venezuela team, playing at least 8, 10 feet behind the bag. And a swing and a miss. Chase the rise ball out of the zone. So Brown goes down swinging. And that will bring up Valdemar Turkelson. And Turkelson, of course, one of the mainstays here on this Denmark team. Probably one of their most experienced players for sure and one of their leaders. Of course, missing his brother, brother Freddie. And he's got to shoulder most of the offensive load. 
And that butt laid down if it stays fair, which Whoa. it does not, would have been a tough play. So good idea. And Turkelson's been struggling so far in this tournament. Be interesting to see here if maybe he can find a way to get in a bit of a groove, despite sitting at 2-1 and one record wise for Denmark their schedule is going to get a heck of a lot tougher so he's going to be facing better pitching and it's important for his team that he's on track and that pitch fouled right off so not a bad swing there from Turkelson as he was on that pitch just fouled it out of play two consecutive batters here now that Uchero is getting ahead in that 0-2 count so really working Ahead in the count, so now he gets to throw his pitch. So Turkelson with some work to do here. One away, runner on first base. A lot of movement in that box by Turkelson. Well, equally as much movement by Flores <laughs> as, again, there appears to be some communication issues between Uchero and Flores. And we'll see if they can get set and work here. Way up in the count now, 0-2. And, and had a notion to Turkelson. Didn't pull the trigger, and the rise ball is up out of the zone. 1-2. and two. And you're right, Joe. would like to see Turkelson's feet just a little more stationary. Appears to be a lot of movement going on, and of course you know... As the runner goes, that pitch fouled off. Now, Turkelson's got good back control, so that's certainly going to help the cause. But again, if your feet aren't stationary, it's quite an art to get the bat on the ball while you're still moving. Exactly. Now, you're going to have to see what pitch gets called here by Flores. Something off speed, you think, or a rise ball back up into that meat of his shoulders? I think with a 1-2 count, maybe you go back upstairs, see if you can't get him to chase something out of the zone. But be aware... It was Simonson that was on the move in the last pitch. And comes back with a rise ball up and out of the zone to even the count two and two. So Turkelson had a notion and changed his mind, and rightly so. Runner goes, and it looked like a leadoff from here. Gun down regardless, and a strikeout. So double play there, strike him out, and a leadoff. Have erased the inning and the threat, and it will work out to a 3-3 three three down, and they are making sure that is the case. So three away. We've played one complete inning, and it looks like they're going to bring Venezuela back on the field. So I'm not sure if they called a legal pitch, and due to the result, they're going to bring back. So the, the throw him out doesn't count. Leadoff's already out. So he will get one more pitch here. So they don't count the strikeout. They call the leadoff, and that's what oh, gotcha. Denmark will take. So Turkelson's back up at the plate with a 2-2 count. The runner is erased in Simonson. And Turkelson can continue here with his at-bat with a chance to do something as opposed to having to grab some pine in the dugout. There goes my perfect score sheet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's off the instep. And that never feels good. I don't care if it's morning or afternoon. And he'll have to walk that off. So it looks like Turkelson's going to be okay. It doesn't matter. He's got to get back in that box anyhow. And he continues to battle here in this bat, this at bat against Uchero. And makes some contact, finds the hole. Great play at short by Chirinos, but no chance. So Valdemar Turkelson with a great job, and it appears that Chirino may have hurt himself diving for that ball and stopping it in the hole. And I don't know if maybe he rolled over his wrist. He had to, he, he made a backhand play on that. 
and may have come over his arm on the roll. He doesn't appear to be favoring anything in the lower body area, so that is my only guess. But give Turkelson credit as he changed that K to a single, and he gives his team another chance here as they are going to call the medical staff out to take a look at Chirinos. And I said it might not have been... It, it could have been his wrist, but it looks now like it is one of his legs. So definitely a lower body injury. We're not quite sure what, as you see some early morning risers. And he appears to be okay. So he's walking on his own power. And we'll see if he remains in the game, which it looks like he will. Good to see him up and rolling here. Very important part of that infield. So what looked like something major turned into something minor, which is always a good thing. And with two away, there's a runner aboard for Daniel Julinon, the designated player. So the inning continues here. And Uchero missing outside. And I'm not quite sure, as you see, Rafael Flores may have taken that pitch right directly in the <laughs> palm. And we, we all know what that feels like. And you can see Flores trying to shake that off. Nothing fun about that. Yeah. Numerous occupational hazards behind that plate. I never did like playing morning games. <laughs> <laughs> I just know I'm not going behind that dish, period. <laughs> As Uchero pours in a strike to even the count at one and one. So Flores is going to run through another set of signs, and he's pointing down. I'm not sure if he's... I'm not sure what what well, Casey White from the huh. USA is saying oh, over he there. He just said clock violation, I believe. And that would be the first clock violation I've seen. In, well, in but if it's a clock violation, how come the runner didn't advance? Well, it clearly gave gave him a ball. The count now is two and one. So I guess they call the ball, and that ball is foul down the line. So it's going to be two balls and two strikes. So instead of uh, advancing the runner, I guess you, it's it's the pitches a ball and you carry on that appears to be the case here and that pitch fouled off so Julianon staying alive here Julianon does have some pop in that bat he's got one of the four extra base hits for Denmark so big man batting in the cleanup spot and the 2-2 reached out and poked just foul so Julianon, you saw, just using the arms there to get a piece of that and live to see another pitch. So we've had our first pitch clock violation. I don't know, Joe, have you, has it? Yeah, I've seen, seen one earlier on this time. Okay. And hasn't really been come into play at all, so... You figure this is day four, and I've only seen two so far. And that's two more than I saw up to this point. So, I don't know, maybe it's you, Joe. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> and took a little off. That was a beauty changeup from Uchero, and down goes Julianon. Caught looking, so turn the K the other way. Regardless of what Turkelson did extending the inning, nothing doing. 
One, no runs, one hit, one runner left the board, and we've played one complete. We'll be rolling to the second after this. Back here at the Pepsi Softball Center in Whitehorse, Yukon. Continuing coverage of the 2017 WBSC Senior Men's World Softball Championships. Day four of competition. This one is Venezuela against Denmark, and it's going to be the four, five, six hitters in Rafael Flores, Luger Pinto, and Jorge Lima. It's the scheduled three hitters for Venezuela in a scoreless ball game. Flores does not get cheated at that plate. No, he doesn't. Not a bad start from Hansen as you see Flores, a big guy, hovers right over that dish, has got tremendous bat speed. So probably best to keep it out of his wheelhouse. And chases that rise ball, fouls it out of play. And you're right, and Flores is one of those guys. He swings hard, he, and that's all the time. He's not going to cut down his swing. It's either that ball is going to be hit hard somewhere or not at all. And Hansen comes down, and that ball is low for ball two. Hanson's trying to be very careful with Flores here now, but two and one count, so he's going to work himself back into that position to get ahead. Two one in tight again. So the count now, three balls and a strike. And a big rip from Flores goes down to one knee. Came up empty, and the count now full three and two. Hansen's done a good job with Jorgensen in their pitching sequences up to this point and missing out. So leadoff man aboard and Rafael Flores as he draws a leadoff walk. First walk of the game issued by Hansen, and that will bring up Luger Pinto, the designated player. Denmark had that good, clean first inning here, and now they let off with that walk, something that might come back to haunt them. And a big rip from Pinto. He fouls that first pitch back off the backstop for strike one. Well, we know you're going to pull out some stats sometime, Joe, about... <laughs> Those walks coming around the score. <laughs> well, uh, we'll see at the end of this inning. Well, here. I'm sure Blair <laughs> Setford's sitting at home going, oh, it's coming, it's coming. So <laughs> I don't want to disappoint Blair. <laughs> By no means. <laughs> By no means. <laughs> so Hansen took a little off, wanted that change up. And the home plate umpire, Yuri Dostal, said, uh-uh. Didn't cross the plate. Good time for it. Hansen hasn't thrown it very often. Shaking his head there and to regroup and get composed again as he misses upstairs. So falling behind now to his second straight batter is Kim Hansen. And that pitch is lifted out and will drift way foul down the 
right side of the diamond. And even the count, sorry, it'll be a 3-2 count now. So we'll see if Hansen can get out of this little jam here or if Venezuela is going to continue to push. And that ball is fouled off again. So a good location from Hansen as he kept it down in the zone. Not a whole lot you were going to do with that except maybe pound that in the dirt for a ground ball. Well, you see that Pinto is on the very outside of that left-hand batter's box. So probably a good pitch location would be to the outside corner of that plate. If they, Pinto is going to take it anywhere, it'll be to the right side of that infield. And the rise ball misses. So the count, two balls, now full. It was two and two. Again, very important that the infielders are keeping an eye on the pitch sequence, too. And that ball is chopped through the hole, base hit. And the runner will, in Flores, will hold at second base. So a walk and now a single from Pinto. And there are two aboard for Jorge Lima. And, Joe, you really have to watch. This Venezuela team has got... So much of an explosive offense that one minute you're in the game and an inning later you are close to getting mercied because they've run up five, six, seven runs on you. So got to be careful here if you're Hansen and Team Denmark. Very professional hitting team. And Lima squared, and yes, he did go around on the bunt attempt, so he's in the hole now 0-1. Squaring and the rise ball out of the zone. Everyone on Team Denmark going where they should. Corners coming in to defend the bunt. Hansen's having a rough time finding the plate this inning. You got to make sure that rise ball's a little bit out of the strike zone, but right now he's nowhere near it. And that will prompt a visit from Israel Nukunuku just to bring the team together and maybe take a collective breath here, knowing full well that Venezuela is capable of putting up a number of runs in a hurry with the power they have. So Lima back to work here, 1-1 one, one count, top of the second inning. And he squares and fouls that one off, so... Certainly not the ideal first couple of bunt attempts from Jorge Lima as he was called upon to, at the very least, advance the runners. Still has a strike to work with here and a chance to move the runners along. The bunt is still a lost start in this game so far. And a swing and a miss. So Lima with a less than impressive at bat and that will bring up Carlos Carreno. Second strikeout for Hansen in this game. So home plate umpire speeding Team Venezuela along. You can't have a chit chat between batters on the way to the dugout. And Carreno now will step in with one away and two men aboard. And that ball is laced, foul, just foul. Inches away from potentially extra bases and opening the scoring. But it goes down as a strike, and he's in the hole now 0-1. Carino has been the big power stats guy here. Five for six, seven runs scored, three doubles, one home run, and with four RBI. So now, again, we're going to take Team Venezuela's stats with a grain of salt, having that big game against Turkey, 35 runs they pushed across. Right. So that certainly helped bump up some batting averages. The question now will be, can they carry those averages over? Together, yeah. And Hansen missing down. Good scoop behind there by Jorgensen to... Avoid the runners moving up a base. 
One ball, one strike. There is one away. And that ball is deep and laced hard. It's going to drop off the top of the wall and stay in play. Rounding third and coming into score is Flores. Pinto will hold up a third. An RBI double for Carreno. And Venezuela lead this one one to nothing. Carino just drove that ball down that left field line. A lot of upper body strength there. Took that rise ball. Drove it right to the fence. Scoring the first run for Venezuela. That one went right off the top of the fence and bounced back in to the field. And in will step John Zambrano. So no relief for Hansen as Zambrano brings a lot of power here to the plate. Zambrano be really asset to you when you can Bad Zambrano in the eight hole. <laughs> Not used to seeing that. Zambrano <laughs> steps up with two men on, and he's batting eight. <laughs> Tells you they got some good sticks in the lineup here for Team Venezuela. I think that was the concern about them not getting enough players. They're one of the top-ranked teams. And Hansen nibbled on that corner, didn't catch any of it, and the count now is one and one. Took something off, but missed upstairs. If you're going to take something off like that, it's good that you miss out of the zone. Yeah. If you miss anywhere around <laughs> that strike zone with Zambrano, <laughs> you're going to be watching that ball go a long way. And that ball lifted up. And settling under, it's going to be Anton Brown coming in on the run, makes the grab, the throw. Coming home, not in time, so a sack fly for Zambrano. Brings in the second run of the game for Venezuela, and they lead this one 2 nothing. A lot of altitude on that ball. Anton Brown had to wait for that ball to come down. He was in perfect location. So it'll be the number nine hitter, Edwin Linares now. With a runner on third base and two out. Hard hit ball goes through the infield for a base hit. Carreño scores an RBI for Linares. As it's now 3-0 for Venezuela. So a good piece of hitting there, Joe. Obviously Linares, very aggressive, as is the rest of this lineup here. And he went after the first pitch and made no mistake. Well, you talk about the bats of this Venezuelan team, but they swing from the heels and the bat speed, the coming through with the hands and the wrists and everything, that's what I'm impressed with. So Corrales now with his second look at Hansen swings through for strike one. Corrales struck out to lead off the ball game. And a swing and a miss. So two good pitches from Hansen. He's quickly up 0-2 here. Three runs already pushed across by Venezuela. And that looked like a lead off for sure. I mean, that wasn't even close. So... Linares runs his team out of the inning. Not before, though. They score three runs off a couple of hits. We'll be back here with the bottom of the second inning in a moment.
Welcome back here as you take a look at Team India on hand here. Catching and learning. It's always a good thing. They're on diamond number one against the United States. That at 1130, of course. U.S. falling to Team Canada last night, 7-1. to one. The score, though, not indicative of the game. As USA led 1-0 the, up until the sixth inning, and Canada rallied for seven runs. So it'll be Jorgensen followed by Mikel Anderson and Mark Nehoy, the scheduled three to face Uchero. Denmark have to find a reply to those three runs put on the board by Venezuela. And no better time than right after. Slow roller, Chirinos gobbles that up, flip over in time. So a slick fielder in Chirinos. Glad he has recovered from that injury. And he looked pretty good on that play, so things seem to be working all right. And that will bring Mikel Anderson up to the plate for his first look at Uchero. And Uchero nibbling, and that pitch outside for a ball. I think it's been a pleasure to see some of these newer teams, Hong Kong, India, Turkey, as that ball is slapped, but right at Paez at third and over to first. Zambano slaps on the tag and they're quickly two away. It's been impressive, Joe, watching these young teams gobble up all the knowledge they can. They're taking all the teaching and, and they're watching and learning from some of the best players in the world here. Again, it's good to see the growth of the game worldwide. And that's important. So... Some teams here, here for the first time. And then you look at other teams like Denmark, for example, a good example of them, of a team that has grown, started off as a bit of a bottom team and have now worked themselves into the middle of the rankings. Botswana, another team, when they came out, those games were very lopsided, and that's changed over the course of a few years. So... Definitely a lot of growth in the game here as Mark Nehoy looks at a called strike. Two balls and one strike to the second baseman. And that pitch inside. So Uchero wanted that call. Didn't get it. And usually staring down the umpire, I have yet to see it <laughs> yield anything positive. <laughs> so it might not be your best course of action. And that pitch fouled straight back. So Uchero comes right back at Nihoy. And Nihoy gets enough on it to live to see another pitch. So the count full here at three and two. And there's a called strike. So Nihoy was headed down the first. Instead, he'll have to head to the dugout. Turn the K the other way. Three up, three down. We have played two complete. Three nothing in favor of Venezuela. Back here in a moment.
Back here for the top of the third inning. Venezuela leading this one 3-0. There have been a change, a pitching change for Denmark. Kim Hansen is out, and Valdemar Turkelson will come in to the circle and take over the pitching duties. The designated player, Daniel Julinon, has moved over to first base. So we were wondering, Joe, when Hansen was going to take a breather, has logged every inning of every game so far for Denmark, and now it's going to be Nuka Nuku that will go out there and potentially just give Turkelson some reminders and make sure that everyone's on the same page as far as the infield goes. Well, this cool weather today, this morning, and a little dampness in the air too, obviously wouldn't be a big influence on Hansen's ability to stay in this game. So warm-up toss is done. Turkelson now will take a look at the top of the order in Corrales, followed by Paez and Chirinos, the scheduled three for Venezuela. A big three-hit, three-run inning in the second has given them the lead here. And sometimes, Joe, what you do on defense can either help or hinder what you do offensively. And maybe pitching being in every pitch for Turkelson will do something as far as sparking that bat. Well, you knew that Turkelson would do some, do some pitching during the entire tournament. So he's a very, very valuable asset to this team and will be called upon to play quite a few roles over the week. So his first pitch was a ball, and he comes up and out for ball two. Corrales is all over that batter's box. And a swing and a miss. Corrales, of course, leading this inning off after a leadoff was called on Linares last inning. I think you'd be coming back with that drop ball because Linares, or sorry, Corrales really lifted his head there. And he lays down a beautiful bunt. Going to be a tough play here. Turkelson wheels and deals. So a good play from Valdemar Turkelson to get the speedy Corrales and record the first out of the third inning. Great rebound off that mound to get down and get that ball by Turkelson. And then turn, pivot, and fire all in the same motion. And, and a brand new first baseman over there, too. So good stretch there by Julianon to pick that up. And I think the key there was that pivot. You had to do that in order to get it online. Hot shot to short, bobbled, and you're not going to get Paez now. So an E6 is going to Dennis Nielsen, and that will allow Paez to reach base. And we'll bring up Yadir Chirinos. Chirinos grounded out to end the first. It was a 1-2-3 first inning. And that changed in the second. Turkelson now has taken over for Hansen here in the third. Took a little off, runner goes, throw down, not in time. So Pius swipes that bag easily. And that throw from Jorgensen, not nearly enough. And another runner in scoring position with just one away here for the meat of the order in the number three hitter, Chirinos. And that ball goes the other way. Julianon, great job of catching that on the short hop. And he will take it over himself to record the out. Paez moves over to third on the play. And it will be Rafael Flores here with a chance to add another run for Venezuela. Flores walked and scored in the second. And rise ball up and out for a ball. And 
again, that pitch, big hack foul. Count one and one. Not quite sure. I didn't see much of a pause there from Turkelson <laughs> on the delivery. None of the umpires <laughs> even <laughs> Sometimes you can sneak <laughs> one through. Sometimes you can sneak <laughs> one through. I don't know about you. I just saw one perpetual motion there. But there's four in the blue crew, so <laughs> they don't get it. I'm not going to say anything. As it's morning for them, too. <laughs> that's right. I pitch all over the outside corner for a strike. And Flores looks back at home plate umpire Yuri Dostal. All right, if, if he's going to get that, I expect to get that next inning. And a swing and a miss. So a good pitch from Turkelson, and he cheers, and Flores takes exception to it. And I'm not quite sure you should, considering Venezuela is one of the most vocal teams here. So either way, down goes Flores, swinging. No runs, no hit, one runner left the board, and we'll head to the bottom of the third. 3 nothing, Venezuela. Welcome back here. We are set for the bottom of the third inning. Lance went alongside Joe Todd. Glad you've tuned in here to Sports Canada TV for continuing coverage of the 2017 WBSC Senior Men's World Softball Championships. So it'll be Anders Savane followed by Dennis Nielsen, then back to the top of the shop in Martin Simonson, all set to face Carlos Yuchero, who has been pretty good up to this point with three strikeouts. And he's faced just seven batters, so... Savane's first look here at Yuchero, and he's quickly in the hole 0-2. And the 0-2 missing up. And you see how quickly Flores popped up. I don't think you're going to get too many calls when your catcher pops up that early. Yeah. You've got to give the umpire a chance to see the location. And a swing and a miss. So Uchero gets the lead runner, sorry, the lead batter in Savane. And there's one away now for Nielsen, the shortstop. Four strikeout for you, Chair, this morning. So after a bit of a shaky start, meaning some miscommunication in the first inning between him and Flores, they have certainly settled in here. As you can see, he has retired the last five batters including back-to-back -back strikeouts going back in him. 1-0, but attempt is missed, and a strike now, so the count 1-1. One and one. That left, right side of the infield for Venezuela should be sharp here because Nielsen's a little late on a swing. You call that, Joe, a slow roller, indecision, and... Unfortunately, not played the best there by Zambrano, as I think that's going to go as an infield hit, Joe. I did. Uh, I think he would have ran it out anyway if Zambrano would have picked it up cleanly. 
So I think Zambrano should have charged that ball without a doubt. He didn't. Slow roller. It's a slow infield right now. So that'll take it to the top of the shop now in Martin Simonson. Simonson walked and got called for a leadoff in the first inning. So Denmark's still in this ball game. If they can maybe punch through a run here and put some more pressure on Venezuela as that one goes off the foot. And that got Simonson in a bad spot right on the instep. And he's going to find his way down the first base and sh shake that off. Certainly wasn't intentional. I don't see a whole lot of apologies going on anyway. <laughs> but anyway, so Simonson will limp down the first. And I think we're going to check and see if he's going to need a runner or not. Yeah, depending on the depth of that bench, I think I'd be putting a runner in. And there we go. Sure enough, that's Duncan Mill. Duncan Mill will come in to do the base running for Simonson, and hopefully he can shake that off. Sometimes it's one of those things where it hurts now. The adrenaline's flowing, so you can go back in the game. But, oh, a little later, you're yeah. going to feel that. It'll be worse tomorrow morning. So Anton Brown now steps in, strikeout victim in the first with two men aboard here for Denmark, and he looks at a called strike. It's the first time this game that Denmark's had a runner in scoring position, so have to take advantage of those situations. We only get so many in a game. And lead up, throw down, almost in time. So if you don't know Rafael Flores, you better keep your eyes and ears perked up. He'll throw to any base at any time. And you saw him there throwing behind Dennis Nielsen to try to pick him off at second base. Would have been a close play if that ball would have been caught by Cheryl's. And swing and a miss. Big looping swing. And expect you, Chero, to stay on the outer part of the plate. And with that drop ball situation, potentially, to keep that ball in the infield. And swing and a miss. So down goes Anton Brown. Two away. And that'll bring up Valdemar Turkelson. Turkelson, of course, singled in the first inning, and he has one of the two Denmark hits. A nibble outside for a ball. So a good eye from Turkelson as he laid off that close pitch. One ball and no strikes. And that pitch in there for a strike. That'll even the count at one and one. Taking that pitch count right down. And bunt attempt is foul. So an interesting idea there to potentially lay one down for a base hit. Oh. I, I think Nuku Nuku, Coach Nuku Nuku, probably wanted him to swing away with two out. Both corners were playing deep, but that bunt would have had to have been well executed. Well, do you test Zambrano again at first base? That might be a question, too. Like you said, he's deep behind the bag again. And that ball shot over Torinos, over to third for the force. So he goes the easy route, going 6-5 for the putout. That will do it for Denmark as they leave a couple men on. Opportunity squandered. We've played three complete.
Three nothing in favor of Venezuela. Back here in a moment. Welcome back here as we see some of the contingency from Team Botswana on hand. And, of course, a lot of air traffic coming in and out of Whitehorse. It's not like you can walk here, Joe. No, no. Look at that. But the scenery is outstanding, including the backdrop. 3 nothing in favor of Venezuela. It will be... The five, six, seven hitters in Lugier Pinto, Jorge Lima, and Carlos Correño. The scheduled three for Venezuela here in the top of the fourth inning. Pinto singled and scored in his only other at bat, that in the second inning. So Turkelson came in, took over for Kim Hansen, and he has done a very good job up to this point. Has to keep them off balance. Mix his pitches up. That ball in the hole. Going to be a tough play and not in time. So Pinto will leg out his second hit of the game. And the leadoff man is aboard for Jorge Lima. Now Venezuela, not a team known to play a lot of small ball, Joe. And with a 3 nothing lead, is Lima swinging away here? No, I, I, Lima is one of the better bunters on the team, so I bet you he'll be laying it, put, laying it down. Looks at a called strike. Didn't look like any indication of a bunt, but again, that's just the first pitch as he will continue to take the sign. Yield on's fairly deep at first base. And just like you said, and it's a beauty, going to be a tough play, but in time. So Lima gets the job done with a sack. And that will move Pinto to second base and set the stage for Carreno, who had that RBI double in the second inning to get his team on the board. Maybe it's just the way that Denmark plays that bunt, but Yulanon sat back, played defense, and actually fielded that ball at the first base side. So something that Venezuela will probably put in their back pocket and start bunting down that first baseline if called upon. First pitch to Carreno is low and inside for a ball. So Venezuela understanding the value of these runs here. Already leading by three, but that's not a lot as Turkelson tries to work the outer half of the plate. And the count now 2-0. Oh. Down to six seconds on the clock. Man, that pitch looked good. Not quite sure what all that movement was about from Carreño. 
pitch didn't look like it was that <laughs> far inside. <laughs> Trying to sell it to the umpire. <laughs> well, he sold it because it's a 3 and 0 count, but I thought that caught some of the plate and didn't warrant all of that. But that's from my vantage point up here, of course. And that pitch missing, so a walk from Turkelson. And now there are two men aboard for John Zambrano. Zambrano had a, a sack fly in the second part of that three run second inning. Zambrano's a complete pull hitter now. Nihoi has to move over defensively. That pitch is in there for a strike. So infield's going to have to be on their toes here. Zambrano, a good contact hitter. And if it's coming, it's coming hard, and that's a slow roller. Feel it by Julian on. The throw is high, so the runner is safe. Throw back to third, not in time. So safe on the play at second base is Carreno. Zambrano is going to reach on the fielder's choice. And now the bases are going to be loaded for the number nine hitter, Edwin Linares. And Linares singled, cashed in a run in his last at bat, and then was called for a leadoff to run his team out of that inning. That, of course, in the second. You just cannot afford to give extra outs here to a good hitting team like Venezuela. Throwing error there by Yulinon. Pulling the shortstop, Dennis Nielsen off the bag. So E3 on that play, and now it's Linares that looks at a called strike. So the bags are full with one away here. Venezuela threatening to put some more runs on the board. Swing and a miss. Lenar is way tardy on that pitch. And he's in the hole now, 0-2. And, Light rain happening here in Whitehorse now. And good three pitches from Turkelson. Sit down Linares with a good rise ball. Big strike out there by Turkelson. So there are two away now, and that will take it back to the top of the shot for Herwin's Corrales. Corrales 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out. And that pitch, and here comes the runner. The flip not in time. So Jorgensen not able to get a handle on that ball and flip to Turkelson. So on the wild pitch, Pinto's gonna come in and it's four nothing for Venezuela and the runners move up. Good aggressive base running there, taking advantage of that situation. Lots of room behind that home plate area. This very different from Diamond number one, swing and a miss from Corrales. But there's a little more room and a little bit of a different different angles in the backstop. Over on diamond one, it's angled in such that they've been getting some favorable bounces. Here, there's a lot of room in the back. And there are corners as that one is lifted up and deep. Anton Brown's got a beat on it, but it's going to be Simonson that calls him off and makes the grab. So that will do it for Venezuela here in the fourth, but not before they push across another run. They lead this one 4 nothing. Back to the bottom of the fourth after this. Put a rain cover on. Do I have uh,
Welcome back as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Four nothing in favor of Venezuela. There'll be four, five, six hitters in Julianon, followed by Jorgensen and Anderson. All set to face Carlos Machero. One more time here, second time through the order. Julianon caught looking to end the first. And he looks at a called strike. Down even, one ball, one strike. Lance Wynn, Joe Todd, glad you've joined us here for continuing coverage. As like you said, Joe, a swing and a miss there. The rain starting to come down. Hopefully it'll remain at this steady pace and not get any heavier. And a pitch from Uchero missing up on the rise ball. So one ball, two strikes the count. That was a good 0-2 pitch, Joe. It's You see a veteran pitcher is going to make sure that with 0-2 count, you don't get anything too sweet. And that ball is out to center field going back. And that ball is caught right at the wall. So an outstanding job out there by Corrales as he goes all the way back where you expect the ball to come down and position perfectly to make the grab a deep fly ball out for Julianon, and there's one away for Anders Jorgensen. A lot of strength in that upper body. Julianon just did not get all that ball. A pitch down and in to the big man, Mr. Jorgensen, as he steps in. Real wide stance there by Jorgensen. And he looks at a called strike on the outside corner. Well, you know where you get it if you're one of the big guys. They're going to try to go outside on you or bust you down and in. And same pitch again in there for a called strike. So one ball and two strikes, the count to Jorgensen. He grounded out in his only other at bat. And that ball, Squibbler, Machero, flip over to first in time for the second out of the inning. So that'll bring up Mikael Anderson, the left fielder. He grounded to third in his previous at bat. Second look here at Uchero. And had a notion there. They're going to check it. And he did not go around, according to <laughs> Tony Caravana from New Zealand. Down at third base. Pitch ground ball. Fielded at third. Good job by Paez over to first. So... A 1-2-3 inning. Quietly go Denmark here. We're about to start our slide to five. We'll be back here after this. Back here at the Pepsi Softball Center. 
as the rain is coming down. Fortunately, not too hard as everyone's getting a little prepared, though. And as a Jays fan, I have to cringe at that Baltimore Orioles blanket <laughs> that's being used by that dedicated fan out there. So it'll be 2-3-4, meet of the order for Venezuela here in Paez, Chirinos, and Flores. Paez, third time around here. He is 0 for 2, reached base in the third on an error. And stole a base, was left stranded at third. Pitch from Turgelson, missing outside. So two balls and no strikes. Important here, getting late, Joe, that Turkelson and Denmark keep Team Venezuela off the scoreboard anymore. Four runs is already going to be a bit of a mountain to climb. You don't want it to, that mountain to get any higher. Exactly. Turkelson's done a good job on the mound, but Denmark have to start getting some offense rolling here. Gutierrez pitched well, too. 3-0 is look close, but Turkelson asking where it is. Either way, a four-pitch walk to Paez. So leadoff man aboard again. And it'll be Yadir Chirinos that steps in now with his third at bat of the ball game. 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. Looks at a called strike. Second time through the order that Venezuela has now faced Turkelson, so you'll see if they've picked up anything from their first time at bat. Chernos went the last time down the first baseline to Daniel Yulanon. And runner goes, throw it out, and he's there in time. So I think the ball was there good. I don't know if the tag was slapped on. And a stolen base for Paez. And a runner now in scoring position for Chirinos. There's a called strike. So Chirinos caught looking. Probably may, might want to spend more time swinging the bat than calling balls and strikes. And they're one away for Rafael Flores. Third strikeout for Turkelson this afternoon. This afternoon, yeah. Uh, no, still this morning. Easy, Joe. Slow <laughs> her down a bit. <laughs> Rafael Flores fouls that one off. Flores walked and scored in the second. Struck out two in the third. That ball laced through the hole in the left side. Base hit. Rounding third and coming in to score without a throw is Paez. RBI single for Flores. And it's 5 nothing for Venezuela. The bat speed that Rafael Flores generates from his strong upper body would just be a little scary over that third base corner. Yeah, that certainly put the hot in hot corner. You're right about that. So a good piece of hitting from Flores as he delivers. And Luger Pinto now will step in. Two for two. Scored a couple of runs. So Pinto has been a real thorn in the side. That's going to find its way just foul. So Pinto looking for another bid for extra bases. Went the other way down the right field line, but had it tail just foul. You have to figure that that's fortunate for Denmark. A little bit of rain, too, so that ball might be a little wet. They'll be switching balls a little more often now. Now the outfield has to be aware of that. The rain will slow the infield down, but it'll speed up the outfield. So as a fielder, you certainly need to be aware of that. Had that ball actually landed on that wet grass with the heavy top spin, it would have certainly skipped and scooted. Ah, speed pops straight up. 
Julian on Colin Fort, and neither him nor Nihoy able to corral that. And, and in my opinion, that's that's Nihoy's ball. He got a call. Julian on off there. Yeah, I'm not sure what the catcher Anders Jorgensen was calling, who he was calling. I think he was calling for Yulin on to catch it, and then so Nihoy kind of bailed off, but it was his ball in his area. So back to work here, and that pitch bounced in for a ball. One ball, two strikes to the designated player, Luzier Pinto. I think Denmark will be happy to see this guy go. <laughs> and a good eye as that pitch is outside for a ball. Count even now, two and two. And came back inside for another ball. So that'll run the count full three and two. And I won't say give in here, but I don't think you should give Pinto anything too sweet. You challenge him, and you might lose that battle. You might want to take your chances with Jorge Lima. Well, you've got eight players playing behind you, so you got to play some defense. Well, there you go with a base hit through the left side of the infield. So you minimize, but third hit of the ball game for Pinto. And that now will... Bring up Jorge Lima with two men on. Lima. Lima 0 for 1 with a sack. And looks like Turkelson will give up the ball and he will make his departure. We will see a pinch runner for Flores, I believe. That in Ruben Guerrero. So Guerrero comes in to run. And we're waiting to see who is going to find their way into the circle for Denmark. Some action going on down in the Venezuelan bullpen. As you see, Mike Pimentel getting set to warm up. So it looks like Lucas Lohman will come in and take over the pitching duties. And we're going to take a short break. We'll be back here in a moment. So things all sorted here. Like we said before, a pinch runner for Flores, and that will be Ruben Guerrero. He's at second base running, and it will be Lucas Lohman that takes over, and he will face Jorge Lima, who fouls the first pitch he sees down the left field line. So just enough rain, Joe, to make everything consistently wet, including the ball and, of course, the players. But infield now, you can see, getting a bit soaked. No puddling or pooling, so that's a good thing. And these guys will be out here 
Continuing play, swing and a miss. So Lohman took something off that pitch. Lima swung through, and the count now is 0-2. Tough spot for Lohman to be put in his first action of the whole tournament here on day four. Welcome to the ball game. And that ball laced down and just foul. So Lima turned on that pitch, but yanked it too far to the left. And might be a good idea not to come back with that exact same pitch or locale. And it's going to be a constant battle with the towel to keep those these balls dry. O2 off speed, swing and a miss. So Loman comes in, pulls the string, strikes out Lima for the second out of the inning, and it'll be up to Carlos Carreño to Keep this inning alive. Carreño has been outstanding. An RBI double in the second. And he walked and was stranded at third base in the fourth. And that pitch inside for a ball. And Risebaugh went for the high drop, didn't get the call, and Loman now is in the hole 2-0 and to Carreño. Loman clearly not impressed with that last call. And a big rip by Carreño is fouled up and out of play. So a rainy overcast Monday here, day four of competition. This is the first ball game of the day. Second one will be over on Diamond One. That's India, United States. Right here, Turkey, Botswana. Follow this one. And that ball is flared out. Catchable ball. Turkelson with a basket catch going backwards. So good hands there as they get Carreño to pop out. And get out of the inning and the jam. But again, Venezuela pushes across one more run. They lead this one 5-0. We'll continue our slide to five after this. Back here as we continue our slide to five, Lance Wynn, Joe Todd, the ballpark broadcasting crew teamed up with Sports Canada TV and Softball Yukon to bring you the 2017 WBSC 
Senior Men's World Softball Championships. Great job done by our camera crew again this morning. Cade Leslie our, is our director this morning. Charlie Keenan is on the first base camera. Kevin Bourne at home plate and Mike Paralini on the third baseline. Sorry, yeah, I believe he's on third baseline. I'm not sure if he was in center at one time, but I think he's moved in. Ah, that Mike guy gets around. He'll be okay. <laughs> So Nihoy here to lead things off in the bottom of the fifth inning. He'll be followed by Savain and Nielsen. The three that are penciled in for this inning to face Uchero, who has found his rhythm here. It was a one, two, three, fourth inning. And we'll see here if he can't continue that. That was his best inning by far. And a swing and a miss. Brought that in on the hands. And Nihoy swung through for strike two. Uchero with five strikeouts, one walk and one hit bats. But just giving up two hits so far. And that pitch missing out. So Nihoy works a leadoff walk. And we were speaking between innings, Joe, about Venezuela potentially squandering an opportunity to really put a dagger in Denmark. And Denmark is hanging around as that will warrant a bit of a trip to the circle. And it looks like they are calling for a pitching change. And Uchero is going to give way here. And it looks like it's going to be Mike yeah, Primentel. That is going to take over the duty. So Chero leaves after five innings or four and a third, I guess, if you want to be technical. And he will give way. So, of course, this pitching change brought to you by Ballpark Broadcasting. We'll be back here in a moment. So Mike R. Pimentel comes in to take over for Carlos Buchero, who goes four and a third and gives way. As you can see, the rain starting to get a little heavier now. So it'll be Anders Savain steps in now with the leadoff man aboard in Mark Nihoy. And if ever there was a time, I would say this has to be it for Denmark to at least, at the very least, threaten and try and get something on the board here to try to get back in this ball game. Again, number eight batter for Denmark. I'm kind of surprised. I know you're down five runs, but you play a little small ball. But he's letting him swing away. Throw down from Flores. Not in time to get Nihoy. Savain very late on that pitch. And missing is Pimentel.
And a swing and a miss. So certainly not the most impressive at bat for Savain as he goes down swinging. One away for the number nine hitter, Dennis Nielsen. Nielsen singled in the third in his only other at bat. So you'll see this constant ball changing going on here. Now it's not a matter of getting a new ball or an old ball. Now it's just getting a dry ball. <laughs> and that pitch missing up from Pimentel. Pimentel got a real quick motion as he releases that ball. Arm coming through very quickly. Squaring and not able to get any part of the bat on that was Nielsen, and that's in there for a strike. And looking for that outside corner. Didn't get the call, though. You see with that last camera shot, the Pimentel is very square to that batter, puts himself in a great defensive position. And Pimentel all over that outside corner. So he was looking for it. He got it. Count now even at two and two. And gassed it up. Went with the rise ball. Sits down Nielsen. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Pimentel. And there are two away for the top of the shop in Martin Simonson. Simonson walked in the first. Got called for a leadoff. Then was hit by a pitch and stranded at first in the third. That pitch is outside for a ball. I think even the most dedicated fans a little tested <laughs> here today with the weather as that one misses down and in. Better have your wetsuit on today. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what you need, a wetsuit and a parka or what you got going on here. But... <laughs> Balmy it is not. That pitch in there for a strike. So Pimentel has settled in here. We'll see what he does after it was Uchero that gave up the leadoff walk, and that spelt the end of his day. And Pimentel goes upstairs, missing with a rise ball to run the count now to two and one. That pitch right on the corner, so came outside and broke back, caught the corner, and the count now is full at three and two. Runner will be on the move in Nihoy. And missing up, so a two-out walk to Simonson. will put two men aboard now for the right fielder, Anton Brown, and Anton Brown has had his struggles today. 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, but his first look at here at Pimentel. And that ball driven out deep, deep. Get out of this ballpark right now. First pitch swing and home run, three run shot from Brown, and this game is now 5 to 3. Brown got all of that ball and drove it deep into that over that center field fence. Pimentel done a great job, come in with back-to-back -back strikeouts, but then had that walk, that whole walk come back to haunt him again. And then Brown taking for that three-run shot, getting Denmark back in this game. Well, we spoke, Joe, about Venezuela not yielding that dagger an inning ago and getting a couple more runs at least to really put the pressure on as Turkelson grounds at the third, bobbled by Paez over to first in time, though, but not before. Lightning strikes here, and his name is Anton Brown. Three-run shot, 5-3 in favor of Venezuela. Back here for the sixth after this.
Welcome back here as we head to the top of the sixth inning. One swing of the bat. Denmark has gotten back in this ball game, trailing now 5-3, to three, courtesy a three-run home run from Anton Brown. Eight, nine, one hitters scheduled for Venezuela. John Zambrano leading things off here as that pitch was up from Lucas Lohman. Lohman, the third pitcher we've seen here for Denmark. It was Kim Hansen that started things off. Valdemar Turkelson, who has made a defensive switch. He's out now in left field. Mikel Anderson has come on to play first base. And Lohman missing outside. Zambrano, 0 for 1 with a sack fly. He's got himself an RBI. And reached base in the fourth on a fielder's choice. That pitch from Lohman in there for a strike. So 3-1 to count. So important here for Venezuela to at the very least put a little bit of pressure offensively on Denmark as that ball is lifted up and flared out going back and making the grab is Dennis Nielsen at short. So one down here in the sixth. They'll bring up Edwin Linares, who had an RBI single in the second and struck out in the fourth, and it looks like there will be a pinch hitter. It'll be Carlos Ojeda that comes in to hit for Linares. And the first pitch to Ojeda is up around eye level for a ball. And that one bounced in. Loma took a little bit off, but you're starting to see now that the weather not only affecting the grip on the ball, but also the landing pad in the circle. A little softer, that means that it's going to shift around a bit, and you may not land or flow in the same spot when you land. And you see Loman still having some issues there with that landing spot. Just not sure on his release point right now. He's really throwing off with this little intermittent weather we're getting. Three balls and one strike. And that will be a walk issued to Ojeda. So one out walk. Has a runner aboard, and it'll swing back to the top of the shop. Will be another pinch hitter. It's Oturo Ocasio, who will hit for Herwin's Corrales. So Ocasio, of course, good power, good speed, and good plate coverage as that pitch is up in the zone. Certainly decked out for the weather is... <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> got the long sleeve sweater on and Ocasio <laughs> is done up and refuses to be cold as that pitch misses and scooting down to second base is Ojeda on the wild pitch so Denmark not helping their own cause here important that they, the deficit remained just two runs, and that's what Israel Nukunuku is going to remind his infield that we need to settle in here. Can't afford to give up another run. Exactly. They just got themselves back in this game. Now you got a quick and early runner on base here in the top of the sixth inning. So if you're Venezuela, it's certainly what you want. Not the kind of answer you'd hope for if you're Denmark. And that after getting the first out in Zambrano. It's a walk, a wild pitch has moved Ojeda into scoring position. And now you have to deal with Ocasio, who is a good hitter that can spray the ball to all fields. That pitch on the outside corner for a strike. So important for Lohman to settle in here. Let his defense help him out. Ground ball. 
He helps himself, checks over to second, and a good gun over to first in time. So a good play by Lucas Lohman. Good defensive play. Had lots of time, so he took a look over to second base. Runner was not off the bag very far, so he had his feet planted. The old step and throw over to first base for the second out of the, sorry, yeah, the second out of the inning. So that'll bring up Iran Pai as the third baseman. He has grounded out. Reached base on an error, stole a base, walked, stole another base, and scored a run in the fifth. So he's been busy. He's been a real thorn in the, Den the Denmark side up to this point. And behind in the count now 0-1. And Lohman comes again with a strike on the outside corner. So he's way up in the count now, 2-0, and oh, sorry, 0-2. Oh Important here to keep the deficit at just two. And that pitch looked like a good one. Half the infield was on their way to the dugout. <laughs> Everyone except for home plate umpire Yuri Dostal, who didn't even <laughs> flinch. He had no intentions, and the count one and two. Good pitch, though. Just teasing him on the outside corner. And that one just fouled off. So Pai has just got enough of that to stay alive. Count remains at one and two. And that one bounced in, blocked, but the speedy Ojeda is going to make his way down to third base without a throw. So Ojeda is doing it with the feet. The question is, can Paez follow that up and find an opening here and give Venezuela a bit more breathing room? We saw that five-run deficit erased, and it's now two as Lohman missing up. So Loman maybe spend less time worrying about that runner at third, more time with Paez here with one out to get to get out of this jam. Needs to be very careful with that runner. Ojeda down that line. Ojeda will run on a wild pitcher pass ball. And that pitch is in there. I thought it was a called strike, but uh-uh. So a walk, a two-out walk to Paez. And that will bring up Yudir Ch Chirinos. And Chirinos is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. So if there's someone you want to keep asleep, it's Chirinos. <laughs> you don't want to wake that bat up. He's got good power. Runners on the corners here as Lohman starts him off with a strike. The fourth walk that Denmark has issued today. That one up, runner's gonna go, no throw down. So defensive indifference there as you see Paez take second base. So a chance for Torinos here as he drives that one at the middle, base hit. Ojeda's gonna score easily. Stopping at third is Paez, so an RBI single from Chirinos, his first hit of the ball game, comes at a very opportune time to cash Paez with the sixth Venezuela run, and that will restore the lead to three runs in a 6-3 ball game. So in will step the big man, Rafael Flores. Flores walked and scored in the second, struck out to end the third, and singled and cashed in a run in the fifth. And Flores got a pitch he thought he could drive and just missed it. Flores with the uh, John McEnroe voice over the at the home plate there. 
Listen, some of us like John McEnroe, all right? So I don't know you taking no digs at Johnny Mac, okay? <laughs> Runners on the corners here. And Flores, a flare and caught by Nihoy at second base. So line drive out ends the inning and the threat, but not before. Venezuela tacks on another run. They lead this one 6-3. to three. We're headed to the bottom of the six after this. Back here for the bottom of the sixth inning. <coughs> Excuse me, Lance went alongside my usual partner in crime, Joe Todd. Glad you have tuned in here. Game 25 of 76 here this week as Pimentel pours in a strike to Daniel Julenon. Leading things off here, trailing by three runs is Denmark. Closed the gap last inning with a three-run blast from Anton Brown. As Julianon looks at a called strike. No balls and two strikes to count. Denmark looking for that spark plug. Something to get them rolling here. Some work going on in the Venezuelan bullpen. And the absence, I think, of ace Ramon Jones certainly play a role here for this Venezuelan squad. Uh, swing and a miss. So Julianon... A less than impressive at bat there as he's sit down by Pimentel to lead things off, and that will bring Anders Jorgensen, the catcher, to the plate. Jorgensen 0 for 2 with two ground outs. And a swing and a miss. So Pimentel coming with a hard drop has good velocity. And he's done a good job in relief here. As that pitch in there for a called strike. So no balls and two strikes. The count to Jorgensen. And that one missing outside. One ball, two strikes. Flores realizing that Jorgensen has gone to the left side of that infield twice now. So he's making sure he's working that outside corner of the plate. And a swing and a miss. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Pimentel. And that will bring up Mikael Anderson. The first baseman, number 51, Mikael Anderson. Anderson, of course, has moved from left field to first base defensively. 0 for 2, two ground outs. A good rip there, but just got a... Little piece of that ball. And it looks like just a wee little bit, maybe a reminder or two. And I'm not sure what. I think Israel Nukunuku just giving Flores a little bit of a break there. Catching that foul tip off the inside of the part of the knee. Well, that's awfully gracious of him. And a swing and a miss. I think he was probably hoping that Anderson would get a breather too. And regroup in the hole now 0-2. Pimento, a real good quick worker out there. 
Not have to be concerned at all with that 20 second clock. Nibbling on that corner. Looked like a good pitch, but didn't catch any part of the white. And the count now one and two. Ball up the middle, fielded by Pimentel. Flip to first in time. One, two, three. Down go Denmark. We're headed to the seventh inning. It's a 6-3 ball game in favor of Venezuela. We come back here after this. Back here for the top of the seventh inning. Venezuela leading this one six to three over Denmark. It'll be five, six, seven in Luger Pinto, followed by Jorge Lima and Carlos Carreño. We'll keep an eye out for any pinch hitting changes. As it looks like Kim Hansen has come back in the ball game and he is in the circle. Pop up there and a good catch there from Nihoy as he records the first out of the seventh inning. So Lucas Lohman is out. They've gone back to their starter in Kim Hansen. And we will certainly get caught up on any other changes. So Hansen, of course, their workhorse. And that ball is lifted up and just foul. Down the left field line. So just a quick glance over at the defense, Joe, and it looks very similar. It looks like the only change was Loman out and Hansen in. Yeah, that's all I can notice. And that off speed is laced, but foul. So Lima turned on that off speed pitch, but couldn't keep it between the lines. And that goes as a long foul ball. And that ball is popped up. Nihoy settling under it, has plenty of time, and makes the grab. So two pop outs to second base for a quick two outs and that will bring up Corneño. Doubled and cashed in a run in the second. Walked and was stranded at third in the fourth and popped out in the fifth. Good and quick inning of work so far for Hansen. So it's what they want is just a quick inning so kind of limit his pitches. He's going to be called upon for the rest of the week. Give them a chance to get the bats going. Single through the right side of the infield for Carreño, his second hit of the ball game. Comes with two out here in the seventh, and that will bring up. Number 59, Francis Rojas. Looks like Francis Rojas will come in to pinch hit for John Zambrano. So everyone in the dugout pretty much getting a swing here at the very least as Rojas swings through for strike one. Runner aboard courtesy a two out single from Carreño. And that pitch comes inside and will run the count even at one and one.
And a swing and a miss. So a big hack from Rojas. Comes up empty two times, and he's behind in the count now, one and two. Very effective drop ball there. All over the outside corner, Rojas caught looking. That will end the inning. No runs, one hit and one runner left aboard. Three outs to get for Venezuela. Denmark with some work to do trailing, six to three. Welcome back here as we head to the home half of the seventh inning. Last chance for Denmark trailing six to three here. Lance Wynn alongside Joe Todd. The ballpark broadcasting crew teamed up with Sports Canada TV here as Nihoy will lead things off. Facing Miker Pimentel and Pimentel starts him off with a ball up outside, up and outside. A pitch is laced into the gap in right center. On it quickly, rounding and trying to stretch that into a second was Nihoy, and he is DOA. Outstanding throw from Edwin Linares out there as he guns down Nihoy, trying to extend that single into a double. Well, a great arm, considering the fact that that grass is wet too, is picking that ball up. Got to make sure you have a real good grip on that ball. When you fire it in. Linares throwing him out, throwing a bullet down to second base. So, I guess they're doing a bit of a <laughs> check there. I don't, is, that, <laughs> is that Chirinos? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're not quite sure what's going on with Chirinos, <laughs> but he's been okay for the last <laughs> five innings. And now he's reverting back to that well, injury from the first. No, I think his, potentially his hand might have got Oh, right, on that play there, yeah. on the slide. Yeah. Gotcha. So this would be a new injury, not <laughs> yeah. an old one. Okay, yeah. he's <laughs> off the hook there. Yeah. So Anders <laughs> Sylvain is the hitter here as he looks at a called strike. Sylvain has got a couple of Ks behind his name and his only two at-bats. And behind in the count now. No balls and a strike. That pitch in there for a called strike two. So Savane struggles at the plate. Just doesn't look comfortable. Needs to go be a little more aggressive. And that pitch bounced down in there for a ball. So I'm not sure what your take is on that Nihoi trying to extend that from, from a single to a double. I don't think it it's going to make or break the, the ball game, but what would you say to him if you're his coach, Joe? Well, I, I'm not probably to, at this stage of the game. I'm not going to give him, you know, any type of criticism. You would think that the ball is going to be wet. I'm probably going to have a good shot of getting into second base, but Lenars picked it up cleanly and a great arm. That's that arm just defined it. Didn't didn't bounce at all. So. Well, you saw Savane go down swinging. Third time he struck out this in this ball game, and now it's Dennis Nielsen. He represents the last hope here for Denmark. He has singled and struck out. So, Mike Pimentel has come in, done a very good job. He's had really little trouble since taking over his duties and a big swing and a miss. Good location on that hard drop ball, down and in. Tough for the big guys to get the bat head out in front and do anything with that pitch. So down to their final strike. And 
that pitch missing down. So a good 0-2 pitch. Not much was going to be done with it. And the count now 1-2. and two. And that ball flared and short hopped. Easy play by Lima. And that will do it for this ball game. 6-3, the final score for Venezuela. They will improve now to 3-1. And, and Denmark will fall even now at 2-2. Two and two. So things getting very interesting when you look at Pool B. And Joe, in your opinion, what was the turning point in this ballgame? Well, I think the pitching staff of the Venezuela team was just a notch deeper than that Denmark team. Uchera pitched a great game and Pimento come on off the bench, really kept him contained. So I'm thinking our player of the game is Lucia Pinto with three hits. And he was instrumental in the fifth spot in the order in leading this high powered Venezuelan offense to a 6-3 win. So that'll do it for us here for this ball game. Number 25 in the books. We'll be back. Turkey, Botswana. Follow this one. For Joe Todd, I'm Lance Wynn. See you next time.